And uh, I have a feeling everyone here kind of knows each other um, already. We've been meeting pretty regularly for the last few months here. Um, but Naomi did introduce Corey Harkins, who is um, actually with the faculty at Farrington High School and the Farrington Interact Club. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I'm happy to uh, welcome Corey to these meetings as well. And I'm super excited that uh, we have two faculty members attending from Farrington whenever they can. Um, so I appreciate uh, your time as well, Corey. The rest of us here, I believe, are all youth service chairs from various Rotary Clubs within the state. Um, I guess what I'll do again, just kind of similarly to last meeting would be just, uh, if you're gonna speak up, um, please, for, if you're speaking up for the first time, if you could just introduce yourself and which Rotary Club or and or Interact Club you sponsor, um, please, uh, if you can do that when you start uh, speaking for the first time so everyone here again can have uh, those introductions. Um, with that said, um, I would love to just kind of jump in here to the agenda. So um, I have a kind of two pretty administrative items up here at the top, uh, Rotaract updates, Interact updates. Um, let's start with Rotaract though. Naomi, do you have anything to uh, update folks with um, on uh, the Rotaract side uh, with um, Ernesto and folks? Um, so the Road Act Committee is formed. So the co-chairs um, are uh, Ernesto, who is the district Road Act representative elected by the Road Actors, and uh, Pili. So Pili uh, Valderrama is the Road Act chair for the district. So they're the co-chairs of the committees, and we have half Road, road Acts and half Rotarians on this committee to oversee the, um, the, the activities of Road Act they decided um, to have a meeting every month, I think, for every road, road rack in the state to do a networking. So they're gonna do a networking and uh, have speakers in career paths. So for instance, if they have um, financial, the next one they want is uh, financial planners. And so they have a, a banker and a trust <laughs> officer and, and different people in the same field and then they'll talk about their careers. So they wanna, um, open that up to whoever wants to go learn at the pool. Sure. So is that going to be open to um, all rotor actors? Uh, is it going to be open to interactors to some degree, or are they? What's their strategy? Do they want to try to publicize that out to more people to get them interested in rotor act? <laughs> Um, it's open to any Rotaract and, and they want to open it up to the their classmates, non Rotaract. Okay. Yeah, so good. If, if they can keep it in the college age and also um, Luke Robinson, who's um, the, the president of the community based metros, he uh, he's going to be involved as well. Um, so interact, uh, we could, but I think it might be at a different level. So maybe you want to have a different um, format for interactors. Up to you. Sure. No, that sounds good. I just wanted to, to ask the question. So thank you. Um, any um, else from Rotaract? I know they've been kind of always looking for projects. I know it's been projects this year have just been hard to do, but. Uh, yeah, so if any club has a project that they want to have Rotaractors, um, so they're um, free spirits and, and they're, um, they can go with any club, right? So they did go with the Surface United, uh, Rot the Rot Rotary Surface United uh, to do beach cleanup. Um, the Ernesto's HPU group went to Centennial Park. And so, and um, the, I guess the Maui club, Maui road actors are helping with Ryla as facilitators. So they're, they're helping as, as much as they can. Great. Um, with that, I'm gonna um, maybe open the floor here to anyone that wants to share or update on activities from their Interact Clubs. I know a couple of people, Jay and uh, Gloria have emailed me, but um, since we're kind of a smaller group here tonight, um, I'll just open it up to the floor here. If anybody wants to share what their Interact Clubs have been doing, uh, how active they've been, challenges, successes, anything, um, just maybe a open few minutes here for anyone to report on. Jay, do you want to go? Yeah, Jay, Jay can go first. 
Well, <clears throat> the uh, Interact Club, we had plans to do service projects together, but uh, that's impossible. You know, I mean, it's uh, with the COVID. Uh, but we have a great uh, uh, teacher who was helping us. And I sent Ryan the list. Each uh, student in the Interact Club has a project that they're doing. Uh, one of them is uh, produce to write daily morning. Uh, they wrote, write and produce a daily morning broadcast throughout the school, which I'm sure they do, you know, on the uh, computer. They're doing food drives. Someone else is organizing a, a virtual talent show. They're doing staff appreciations. Uh, they're best buddies with Special Olympics. Someone's making scarves for military personnel. Uh, they're featuring different teachers, new teachers with an interview, uh, you know, weekly. Uh, they're do, trying to do a beach cleanup. Uh, they're making a thousand cr paper cranes for the hospital and they're writing a, a, the spotlight, uh, their staff members. So they're doing a lot of things. Uh, oh, and they make another one is they're making toiletries and water for the cup of cold water. Right? So they're a very active club, but um, we don't have any interaction with them per se. And that's, that's the sad part, but uh, I'm glad they're working. Yeah, no, they definitely um, are. Uh, it's great to see them doing all this work. I think for those here, um, and this was, a, I think, a unique concept, right? Is like each individual student is kind of taking on their own project here um, because of, you know, the challenges with interacting with others during this time. I think that's a great idea. I think um, I'm, I'm going to maybe offer that out to my my interact clubs at Roosevelt and Mid-Pacific. So um, uh Anyway, that's, you know, that's good to hear from you, Jay. Um, anyone else? I know Gloria um, reported to me um, if you wanted to report here. Um, the, the Interact Club's there at IPA, Island Pacific Academy, were involved with and piggybacked on the Rotary Focus themes that were going on this year. Um, the first one was with um, the polio awareness, which happened in October. And to be honest with you, the kids didn't know too much about Polio Day or World Polio Day or any of that. So we started off with an infomercial where the club members, and they could do this virtually, would create infomercial about polio how it was eradicated, where is it now, and all of that for about 10 days prior to October 23rd or 24th, whatever that Saturday was. And they did a good job, I think, um, since all instruction were done virtually, the kids were a captive audience to that. The other um, aspect of that was a small group of them um, got together with the Rotary Club of Kapolei Sunset. And we had the cupcake. That was our, the project for our club. And the students were the ones that held posters at the entrance of the, the partner, the cupcakes and Oh, gosh, I can't remember the, the business name, Cupcakes and Things or something like that in Kapolei. And so they held up, they didn't sell because we didn't want them involved with the money aspect, but they were advertising the event. So that was our October project. They were involved in Make-A-Wish Foundation where they made videos for kids this was early on in the fall, made video for kids that couldn't go on their um, trips or special events. And then in, the, in January, they were involved with um, the tree planting with their families. So their families were really part of their little core group. That also helped because the families then were the drivers to the event itself. And they really enjoyed that. Prior to that though, um, to give 
context to why tree planting, we had Dr. Mora do one, um, was a guest speaker in one of the interact meetings to talk about um, the whole notion of getting rid of the, the carbon and climate. They have other projects that they're looking at and the one that they're most interested right now is the beach cleanup on April 24th. So I did um, ask Ryan and Naomi if we can get the information because there's a process. I don't know if any of you are having to go through it, but for the kids to be involved in activities, they have a process for approval from schools and parents and all of that. And that's a, almost a six week process. So when we're looking at events in the future, all I ask as an advisor to these groups is that we are given a window of eight to six weeks because most of us have it on our calendars before we start the year. And that way we can get it going through the, the um, protocol that the schools have in place. Great, thank you. And I, I'm gonna ask the only to update everyone on the April 24th Eco Beach Cleanup Project because I think we're all very interested in when that will occur. <laughs> Is that you, Tiara? Yes, hi. Um, yeah, that's me. April couldn't make it. She's the one actually in charge, but um, I do have some updates um, if we wanted to go through that later or I guess whenever. Um, let's just go through it now. We'll skip it. I'll come, we'll come back to it later in the agenda, but I mean, we'll skip it later in the agenda. Why don't we just go through it now? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, let's see if I can share my screen. One moment. Naomi, does she have screen sharing ability? Okay, good. So Tiara is from the Eco Club. And so the Eco Club um, April Bullis had this idea of picking up plastics uh, from different places is ridge to reef. So um, up in the mountains and the hiking trails and the reefs picking up um, plastics and rubbish. And so she, um, so Tiara is gonna tell us more about that project, right Tiara? Yes, um, so sorry Naomi. Are you able to pull up the screen? It doesn't look like I have it on this laptop. I thought oh. I did. It's just not opening. Oh, um, which screen is it? Um, I had sent you an email with, it's just one PowerPoint oh. slide. I see, okay. Sorry, I did see that. I was on, on um, PB's tree planting Zoom this <laughs> Uh, prior to this. <laughs> but by the way, we're going to plant 3,000 more trees, everybody. <laughs> okay. Yes. So this is just um, a one slide just showing, um, I guess, the key dates. Let's see. So this is happening April 24th. It's a solo style cleanup, just because we can't have any group activities um, due to COVID. Um, so it's just a cleanup of an area in your community or a community that you think needs more attention. Um, and you would basically clean and record the waste that you've recovered as the audit part of it. Um, so this is to evaluate uh, the high waste areas that we have in our community um, where we can then again go ahead and determine opportunities for um, projects. So just an example that April had given me earlier um, was maybe a place that had, you found a lot of cigarette butts at a park and um, maybe we can see if there's opportunity to put a um, cigarette receptacle <laughs> in that location. Um, and then we would have yearly visits. So this would kick off a yearly, 
I guess, annual event that we would do. Um, I've included April's email there on the slide if, if you have any questions for her um, or more about the project. She's currently uh, working to secure dive teams, maybe boats and gear to tackle the ocean pollution. Um, there's really no limit <laughs> to what you can do with this project. Um, some people want to uh, go on a hike and um, clean up a hike. Some people want to clean up bike trails. Um, some people want to do ocean reef cleanups. Some people like to dive and they thought, hey, well, might as well clean up <laughs> my area that we like to dive in. So um, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, but a flyer is being made to distribute to each club. It's not ready yet. I think April's waiting for a few more details. Um, and then she's also presenting this project to the presidents and community chairs tomorrow. Um, so if there's any other updates, um, I guess either sure. tomorrow or yeah. So but thanks. if you guys hadn't had any questions, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, April's information is right down below. Yeah, so thanks, Tiara. Um, I think what I'm hearing is that um, <clears throat> each uh, club, and, and that kind of includes our interact clubs and Rotaract clubs would be kind of responsible to kind of plan their own solo cleanup event <laughs> of them and the appropriate amount of people they can hang out with uh, to remain under county rules um, <clears throat> and pick up, pick an area, um, pick up some trash, do an audit, uh, record it and report it back into April and the Eco Club. So um, they can find the location and the amount of trash and we can kind of almost create a little, like a map kind of, of just like where are all the high pollution areas kind of in the state, right? And so actually the goal would kind of be to spread out actually as much as possible, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, it's interesting. So uh, I, I think uh, for all of us here, um, if you have an interact club that you'd like to invite to do this, um, I know my club was gonna probably hooey up into groups. Um, I might end up hooeying up then with some of the interact clubs and that I'm overseeing. So Roosevelt and Mid-Pacific, see if I can get them into bunches of three or four and so I kind of spread them around too as well. Um, but. So I'm kind of hearing that um, it's a little bit on the community service chair and the youth service chair here to really work with your partner clubs to get them spread out over the island. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, no, no problem. Um, and then I don't know, you know, wear your rotary shirts, take a picture, send them to April, send them to us. Um, I'd love to do like a press release or something like that for Naomi, that'd be cool. Um, and so uh, I, I think, we kind of all have our ideas now. Um, so less, probably less structure than we're all used to. Uh, obviously COVID has been a little bit of a challenge here. Um, so, but I think hopefully everyone here has uh, the direction they need. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> well, Ryan, if I can make a suggestion um, that if the, the inter, if the Interact Advisor wants to make this a deeper project, that they research um, places that have the accumulation of plastics and rubbish, and then they plan. So it's a learning experience and leadership experience for the interactors to plan the project and coordinate it. Um, but they also can learn about um, the environment and rubbish and how the plastics affects um, the, the climate change and the environment. And if they want speakers at the Interact Club meeting, the Eco Club is working on getting speakers um, to go and do this training so yeah. that they can learn about, you know, plastics and rubbish. Great. Sounds good. Okay, any questions on that? All right, thanks, thanks, Ciara. Um, I think, the, so for me, you know, if there's, are there any other um, Interact Club updates out there right now? Um, anybody would love to share? No. Okay. Ryan, HB yes. Interact is, um, we're still going ahead with our Redirect project and that is reading to a kindergarten 
uh, grade K. Right now, the, uh, the readers are going through training sessions because it's, it's a little different in trying to keep the attention of five-year-olds and how to read to yeah. five-year-olds. So our high schoolers are finding this experience very enlightening. And some of them have turned to me and said, so are there any tips or tricks on how, how teachers teach us high schoolers? And I tell them, oh yeah, there, there yeah. is a lot, but we're not gonna tell you that. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're finding that this, they're focusing on this project now and they're finding it really enlightening you know, to see right. how teachers teach or how people maintain in, um, attention spans and stuff like that. No, that's great. Um... Yeah, so if anybody you know here has a, an Air Act club and they, they want to um, kind of do a reading project like that, um, uh, Susan over at HBA has a lot of experience with that. And um, you know, wherever we can kind of set up these virtual events, I think that'd be great. So thanks for sharing. Um, I am going to move on here to uh, a couple of programs we have coming up here. I just want to share with you. So um, I think you guys have all seen my emails. Uh, there is an event, a webinar this Saturday. It's free. Um, it's targeted to uh, high school uh, students, so any age really in high school. Um, it could be for middle school students as well, really. Uh, I have gotten several questions if this is for adults, and at some point maybe we will do one for adults, but it is a, uh, a webinar in a partnership with Toastmasters, and so I'm sure um, most of you here are familiar with Toastmasters, uh, a group focused in on improving uh, people's public speaking and self-confidence and presentation skills. Uh, so we're excited to have this partnership, uh, Rotary International and Toastmasters analysis partnership. I think it was a couple of years ago, or uh, at least oh, at least over a year ago, and they were uh, planning on coming up with a bunch of uh, combined learning opportunity kind of resource packets. I haven't seen that yet from International, but we are starting to get some of this stuff off uh, the ground with our local connections with uh, Toastmasters, and so. The first session will be this Saturday and it will be focused on self-confidence and making the right, the right, not the wrong, making the right first, uh, good first impression. And so uh, we're excited to have it. Um, we've got a couple of folks from Toastmasters who will do, be doing a presentation and um, we kind of just finalized the program today. Uh, what it'll be is uh, just a short presentation on some of the tips and tricks of of uh, making a good impression, what you, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Um, but at the end of the um, uh, webinar, they're gonna do a breakout session where they're gonna ask each student to talk and do a little bit of a short table topic talk about what um, is meaningful to them and how do they feel like they wanna impact their community around them. So we're really trying to make this into a community service based topic uh, in conjunction with Toastmasters, uh, where they'll get the opportunity to, to work on their pitch, their presentation, their public speaking, their organization. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to it. This is the first, um, <clears throat> this is the first webinar of this series, but we're also looking to have another one with a little bit more in-depth topics on April 10th, and then another one on May 15th, which will be part of the district conference. The uh, uh, Toastmasters has a program, it's called uh, the Youth Leadership Program, and so uh, they will be giving uh, different topics out at different of these events um, uh, related to youth leadership. So we're super excited about it. It's free. Please, please send out um, the invite. There is no RSVP right now because we're kind of shooting from the hip right now, but um, we're hoping to get, um, you know, a good turnout. So I hope uh, you folks can uh, Send it to anyone, you know, it doesn't have, they don't have to be interact. So just, uh, we're just trying to get uh, uh, our youth to be involved in these things. And um, just, so, just so you know, I, I was able to get it to um, all the principals in the state um, at the DOE. So hopefully uh, this does uh, trickle down uh, to their counselors and their educators there. Does anybody have any questions on the webinar? Everyone's got the invite, I hope. And the information, great. Okay. Yep. Uh, on top, uh, so moving on, uh, there was a young professionals networking event. It was this past January twentieth. I think there was a Bank of Hawaii speaker. They owe me anything to report on that, and do they have another one planned here? Uh, every month at the same time. So that's the um, 
third Wednesday, I think, Wednesday. at six o'clock. So the next one is going to be Toastmasters again. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is Toastmasters for young professionals and how young professionals can use that same kind of skill, but at that level to uh, make contact with other um, young professionals. Uh, so Evan Tom is running that, and then they decided uh, to invite a CEO each session so that they can hear um, from a CEO about their philosophy on life and running a business and and the, and how their business works. So it's a um, learning experience. So that is for age 22 to 40, I guess, for young professionals. All right, sounds good. I guess I'm eligible still. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, can you send me the information on that so I can send it out to um, all of the youth service chairs? Um, I, you know, I, I would be happy to even send that to several of my, my colleagues at work, my younger staff at work. So I'm sure all of us know someone between the age of 22 and 40 that we can send it to. So um, Naomi, if you can send me that, I'll send it out to the youth service group. Okay. Thanks. HRYF, uh, hopefully everyone got applicants and are doing your interviews. Sounds good, very good. <laughs> yes, Ryan, question. Just a quick question. Uh, overall, uh, normally we have five or six. We only had one applicant this year. Uh, and I was wondering if other clubs are experiencing the same thing uh, because of COVID, are applications down this year? Do you Naomi, did, did Jeff, I don't see Jeff on the line, but um, did Jeff, uh, was Jeff able to kind of redistribute some here or there where he needed to or? Yeah, it was up to the area uh, coordinator to see how many applications everybody had in their area and then uh, parcel it out if there was there were clubs that were short. And there were clubs that uh, didn't have as many as before. Uh, but um, some clubs did really well. So like Mililani, Mililani, you guys got about, what, eight? <laughs> oh, you're muted. Junior, okay, you're June, muted. we had, yeah, we had 12, 12. but we um, did send out two and we had a third one, a 13th one that came today. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a little too late. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> Yeah, so some, some clubs did really well and some clubs um, uh, were kind of short. So, you know, for next year, it would be really good if the connections you have with the schools, if you could remind them uh, three weeks in advance of the deadline, because it takes, a it takes time to get all the recommendation forms and things. So uh, we need everybody's help to get the word out because the odds of getting $5,000 from every club is really good. So they should be applying with us, right? Could be. Yeah, you know, this happens um, year to year. Um, so not uncommon, um, but we uh, will try our best here as we keep moving forward and get some more momentum to just keep spreading the word. This year, I'm sure was just a challenge with COVID and everything too, so. Ryan, can I just add something here? Yes. Um, we grappled with reassigning applicants simply because the application form does not mention that we have a right to do that. Okay, there's nothing in it that says we reserve the right to reassign applicants at our discretion. We need that in that application going okay. forward. Okay, good suggestion. Yes, so we'll I make that could, note um, brought that up because um, of the confidential information in there. When you indicate that that application is going to a particular place, it has to go there. Yeah. If it goes somewhere else because of the sensitive uh, nature of the information, because they're attaching their SARS. And yeah. for some kids who don't have their SARS, they're attaching the full FAFSA. Yeah. They have to know where it's going to end up. Well, yeah, you can't, you can't do this. You can't reassign without telling the student and getting their consent. Okay, so there's a question from Gloria on how, what did Mililani do to get so many applicants? What did we do? Um, I think it's just by history. We have a very active career coordinator, counselor, career, career and college, college counselor. And she pushes the kids. She, she keeps your mind. She tells them, I think you might be able to get this one. And we publicize 
we tell our um the school and well our club now is inactive this year but we tell the students and we've been telling them every time that you know when they become seniors to apply so it's just by word of mouth and i guess history mm -hmm. the kids know about it so they apply mm -hmm. for so most think... schools when they get when we receive scholarship information it goes on a list for some right. people they post the list like mckinley has they post it on their bulletin board so whoever wants scholarship information it's on them to come to that board to look for um, other schools like us we post it on an online server um, and so it's up to the kids to check the online server um, part of it goes to effort you know if yes. you're willing to make that effort to look for scholarships then by all means you deserve to compete for that scholarship. Um, and, um, yeah. You know, HRYF does send it out to all the schools directly. So it's not like the schools don't have it directly. It's it's right. really like Susan is saying, it's kind of on just the students kind of know, you know, knowledge and awareness of what's around them and what's going on. Yeah. Um, Linda, how many did we have at Honolulu Sunrise? Just two? The two that I, the two that I recommended? Oh, well, <laughs> okay. It was two. It was two from my interact clubs. One at Mid Pacific and one at um, Roosevelt. Um, I think I told my other interact clubs go go uh, choose other clubs too. So um, I should have maybe not said that, but uh, um, I told them to apply to their geographic location, like the instructions say. So hopefully, uh, hopefully others did. Um, but anyway, um, you know. You know, it's a great program. Um, there will be a luncheon at some point this summer, virtually, I'm sure, um, and we'll have a chance to celebrate uh, the, uh, the winners there. I do want to um, move on here to Ryla. Um, and so Ryla, I'm sure you guys have been aware of and uh, have been a uh, publicizing here and there uh, is the registration I just want to say is still open. Um, all the information is, is at rylahawaii.org. So if you, if you know of anyone that's interested to attend, uh, we think would be a good uh, candidate to attend, please um, make sure to send them the information. Um, the agenda is posted there as well. Um, and there are still sponsorships available is what the Ryla committee is telling me. They, uh, unfortunately, they have a planning um, event uh, tonight, uh, so they couldn't make it here, but they've got a lot planned. They've got a lot going on, both with virtual platform, um, as well as, um, you know, things that the students will be receiving in the mail or through deliveries. Uh, they have a quite a, a jam-packed agenda um, with uh, interactive activities and things like that, and so I think they've done a great job, really, of, of, of taking this challenge of, of doing a remote virtual RILA and, and turn it into something that will be uh, fun and interactive for everyone um, statewide to participate uh, in together at the same time. And so I already, I'm already getting questions from my um, interactors that uh, Honolulu Sunrise sponsored to RILA about what's gonna happen and what, what should they expect. And I think uh, they're excited. So um, we're looking forward to it. Uh, anybody, and Naomi, did you, you wanna add anything about that or? Mm, no, um, they, yeah, the high school Ryla, they still have some openings, so they still have some uh, room for people to sign up, and the couple yeah. lady is sponsoring, um, and so couple lady still has some spots that they can um, sponsor newer kids, and so we, we got a word today that we've got some from Waianae that are coming. Great. Yeah, last last numbers I saw, we have, I think, 66 registered at the moment, and we're capable of having, I think, up to 120. So there are still spaces available. No, Tiara is the keeper of the numbers. So Tiara, we have about 80, right? Um, I haven't checked as of today, but I know last week was um, around that number. Great. So just um, um, just about 40 spots left, it sounds like, um, which is great. Um, please, uh, uh, even so I guess, you know, for even like myself, like if my, like I've, I've 
publicize it to my clubs and each each of my clubs is sending four uh, four students but maybe i will uh, see if there's any other additional folks that do want to attend and uh go from there so uh they, we do have a couple of uh days here not a lot <laughs> The event is on February 26th and 27th, and there is a mandatory, well, an, online, an optional, I'm sorry, parent orientation, uh, because there was some questions about using um, Discord. Uh, so the, the RILA committee just decided to do an optional parent orientation on this 22nd. So um, things are falling into place. RILAHawaii.org, um, if you guys um, can uh, publicize that out, that'd be great. All right, and then Junior Isla is actually this weekend. <laughs> it's there's a lot going on, so we've got um, the uh, Toastmasters webinar and Junior Isla this weekend. Um, but they were, um, and I and I think I apologize. I have to clarify this. I think I misspoke last meeting, saying it was completely free. <laughs> Hopefully, Naomi clarified that. But um, there is a nominal fee uh, to attend. I don't know if they filled up their all their spots. I think they were looking at seventy ish spots at maximum, um, but they uh, are uh, looking forward to having their two hour mini Ryla on, on Saturday. Any updates from you, Naomi, on that one? Um, oh, they had a training for the facilitators. You gotta see these facilitators are so energetic and so um, gung ho on this whole thing. So it should be really good because they have a speaker um, who has done these virtual Rylas on the mainland for middle school. And so it, I think it'll be a really good one. So um, uh, I think we're still waiting for Val maybe uh, to get in some, some more um, people though. If, if anyone has middle school students they would like to send, our club would happily sponsor because our middle school is not responding. We've tried so many times. Val, what club are you with? Uh, we're downtown Honolulu, we sponsor Central Middle School. But they just had a new principal start a couple months ago. So we think there's a lot of shift and there's just not good communication to the students. Um, but we did sponsor a lot of spots. So if anyone knows anyone, we'd be happy to sponsor them. <laughs> uh, Susan, yours are covered, yeah, so no problem. Jay, you have some some more? Yes, I wanted to know about, uh, you know, all Interact, local on Interact uh, has been uh, the sounding board uh, one of the Interact students is uh, Wendy Horniak's uh, daughter, by the way. But I didn't know any, I didn't get any information about how much it is to sponsor or whatever. Well, for Maui, um, they put in enough for 25 kids or 30 kids. So oh. anybody from Maui, you're, you're good. So you have some more? No, Do I you don't. Have some more kids? Oh, not that I know of. Okay, so Maui had leftover money from Ryla from um, last year or the year before, and so they're covering all of the Maui kids. That's what I understood, but then, you know, Ryan said something about a cost, and that's what had me a little oh. confused. Well, it's twenty-five dollars, but that's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I think I just was like, anyone who wants to go in that class, last me was like, anyone who wants to go is free, but it's not actually. Maui is covered, um, HBA is covered. There are certain clubs that did cover a bunch of spots. Um, and it sounds like downtown Honolulu has some open spots. So yes, if, if you know anyone, they pretty much would be free at this point because um, there are available sponsorships uh, to attend. So um, I will try to spread the word as well. Um, I know we're coming up here to the 13th, but um, definitely we'll, we'll try here. So, all right, um, upcoming events. Um, I had a couple of things on here that, um, are a little outdated, but um, there was a virtual RILA conference. I believe all of our RILA planners this year ha did attend this past January and hopefully uh, was it, were able to get um, something out of it to help them plan this year's RILA. Uh, this was just some free resources that were put out by um, our zone. And so uh, it's uh, that was completed. I, it was just something just to let you guys know occurred. Um, we are still, and I'm looking at Val, Valerie here too, um, going to be doing some more college and career webinars here, probably looking to really just plan out what's going to happen in August, September, October, really, uh, for next school year. But we will be looking to, uh, to do that um, uh, 
focusing on the Common App uh, scholarships, financial aid, and, and other things that we did not cover this year, like resume writing and prep, interview prep, things like that. Um, we would be definitely uh, looking forward to uh, creating those webinars and finding uh, uh, content for it. So we'll be working on that, I promise. <laughs> And then we did talk a little bit about a joint um, Interact Rotaract Rotary, Rotary project in the Eco Project uh, coming up in April. So uh, hopefully you all can uh, engage your uh, youth to participate in that. And then the last thing I just wanted to talk about here was our 2021 district conference. And I don't know if everybody knows Naomi, I, it is gonna be 100% virtual this year because that is the direction, the directive from RI um, so no, no longer traveling to Hilo, um, but uh, because it is uh, virtual, I think that does again offer some unique opportunities to really reach uh, folks statewide instead of just folks who could have traveled to Hilo. And so uh, I am uh, looking to prepare a youth breakout session uh, in the morning of Saturday of the district conference. Um, and I'm hoping to, uh, um, maybe just do a little bit of a recap of kind of the year and what our plans are for next year. And then maybe talk a little bit about um, some of the topics that we kind of wanted to bring up this year, but just kind of really didn't have a chance to do regarding our Interact Clubs, like having an Interact Council, having some competitions maybe for our Interact Clubs to engage in, in terms of service, community service, uh, things like that. Uh, there are a lot of great ideas out there that we could do, but doing them virtually has definitely been a challenge this year. Um, and then uh, towards the end uh, in the afternoon, um, we're going to likely have a, uh, a breakout session for our youth, another Toastmasters session, and then a uh, uh, Interact Club planning session. So how, how can they plan for next year? Um, hopefully they have already selected their officers. If not, they have to select their officers for next year and really work on that continuity of uh, the, the lineage of leadership through the Interact Clubs so we don't get Interact Clubs kind of fading off once the officers or seniors depart. So that's what I'd like to focus in on the district conference. Anybody um, have any thoughts or think that um, I should talk about something else there? <laughs> any other topics of burning concern that you'd like to hear from me about at the district conference? Ryan, I don't know if you mentioned this. I think the lineage is a great topic. Um, so excited to see that that's part of it. I know everyone's really struggling, uh, even in non-COVID days, like recruiting. Um, and certainly now that everyone's gone virtual, it's probably a hundred times harder. So I, I don't know if there's like a round table or a way you could tackle that topic. Um, I also wonder if there's an opportunity for all the Interact Clubs to come together as a district and pick a charity to sponsor. And, and so that way there's a little bit more cohesion and kind of a one, one district feel between all the clubs. Um, and if there's something fun that you could do around that. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think um, <clears throat> I would be happy to, you know, do a round table or even a panel um, <laughs> for, uh, for membership, interact membership. I think all of us have been struggling with that. The, the best, Membership vehicle for me always has just been friends of the officers find the next officers. Um, and it's always worked for me, um, but uh, I would be happy to um, uh, have that discussion with Rotarians and interactors alike, both. Um, I think it deserves uh, conversation at, at all levels, not just the Rotary level, but within the clubs themselves too. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, picking a charity to sponsor was a great, you know, is a great idea. I think you and I have also talked a little bit about, um, you know, trying to do a community service challenge for the year uh, and finding out which clubs are, can be the most active in community service. And uh, maybe towards the end of the year, the top three get to do a special project that's funded by the district where they maybe get to go spend a weekend somewhere um, or do something um, fun with their friends uh, in service, like go to Koho Olave or something. You know, those are some of the ideas that were thrown around there. Um, that would be kind of a cool way to really uh, motivate and, uh, you know, engage them and hopefully motivate them to, to do service for 
um, a variety of reasons, not just for the college education or application too. So those are all, all important things. Thanks, Val. <laughs> Gary, thanks for joining us. Yeah. You're catching the tail end here though. All right, I thought you were gonna say something. Um, so I think you know that for, for the most part, you know, I'll come up with a, a program and an agenda for the two breakout sessions that I'm planning on doing. And um, the, the afternoon one will definitely in, invite all of our youth um, from around the state, various uh, interact clubs, and try to get them to you know interact with each other from across the ocean as well, the islands. Um, and uh, I think if we can unite them somehow in some kind of common cause, uh, I think that's a great idea to help um, maybe set a theme at least for the year and try to set a theme for the Interact year every year. So that's uh, uh, probably one of uh, our next pushes here. All right, um, uh, the last couple of things, I just had some administrative stuff, but um, does anybody have any maybe questions on upcoming events or programs before I get into the more admin stuff <laughs> and then we let you go? No, all right. Um, so just uh, last uh, minute reminders and administrative things. Um, I know, again, this has been a challenge, but if you have your advisor identified and either your advisor is gonna change or something or you or, or just uh, you haven't been up to date in Rotary International's Interact Club records, please go to Rotary International's website and make sure that your club's advisor both the Rotarian advisor and the school advisor contact information is up to date. That is due this year before June 30th, uh, but we need to do it as soon as you know it really. So please, please, please make sure that you are doing it. Um, and then the last thing that I had um, was just um, background, <laughs> background um, checks, make sure you're up to date. I think um, Natasha and the YPO youth protection officer, I think that's Peter too, right? Um, have been sending out uh, reminders for folks that haven't and, and they know that need to be, <laughs> myself included. I totally forgot that mine expired, um, but I just did mine. It was fast, completed in less than a day. Um, and so if you uh, are working with our youth directly, please make sure that you are up to date um, in all of our youth protection requirements. Whew, that being said, it's uh, Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> it's uh, 620. Uh, any other last minute questions or thoughts? Uh, otherwise, um, that's all I have for today. Actually, Ryan, uh, this is Brian. Um, Naomi reminded me that the Rotary Club of Honolulu does a um, video contest uh, sponsorship together with Alelo. And I don't, unfortunately, have the information for it um, like I've got it on my computer and I'm connected to Zoom through my phone, so I can't transfer it directly, but I'll, um, I'll get that information to you so that we can maybe share that because um, basically any of the um, students that are interested in that can uh, apply to that and, and potentially make a video and get it into the contest. It's really kind of interesting each year. Yeah, great. Is that one related to the um, the peace um, topic? Yes. Okay. Yes. Our, so uh, the video contest has many uh, categories. The Rotary Club of Honolulu sponsors the peace category within the video competition. Great. Um, so yeah, if you uh, please, uh, I, I'm more than happy to send that out to the youth services. Group. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll forward the information to you, and I'll carbon copy Naomi, and then you can forward it along. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks, Naomi, Naomi, for reminding me. Okay, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Um, look forward to seeing you all. We're gonna. So the meetings are been on the, the second Tuesday of every month. So I'll see you next month, uh, March. Um, and uh, look forward to any updates that you guys have, and we'll have uh, hopefully a nice update from Ryla. It's All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Since February has 28 days, March was the same. March <laughs> is the same. March 9th. All right. We'll see you then.
Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank, Thank you. you, Naomi. Wesley, Thank you. Wesley, can I get your email address? Wesley? Yeah. Um, it's WKMUN at hawaii.rr.com. And what club are you with? I'm with Pro Ridge. Oh, okay. Thank you. So Thanks. Susan, Susan, yeah. your, your um, middle school, Ryla, they're going to be covered by Metro. Metro's going oh, to cover all, your all nine of them. All of them. Wow, that's awesome. We'll send them a thank you card. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.